Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another installment of Remake Revolution. This fun little show is, of course, produced in conjunction with Mike McGee TV and the Three Geeks Podcast. I am your host for this edition, John Orlando of the PVD Cast, and I'm joined tonight by our two competitors. First, the man that is known as Mike McGee. Uh, Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, it's been a long time since I've actually participated and been a contestant on my own show. Usually I'm just <laughs> in. So thank you, John. Thank you for taking over hosting duties. Yeah, because otherwise you would not be impartial. Yes, exactly. exactly. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and your opponent this evening is from the Three Geeks podcast. Scott, how are you? Good. Is, uh, You're already first... celebrating a victory, I see. No, I'm just, just excited to be here. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, first time competing. Uh, sat in on plenty of these, so I'm excited. And that's just Scott's regular hangout. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yes. Yeah. The what do you call it? The Sanctum something or San other. Sanctum Sanctorum or something. Like the that. Rick Santorum. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> it, it is. Uh, it, it is Sanctum Sanctorum. That's the last thing I'll chime, chime in for. Who's that mysterious <laughs> voice? <laughs> that mysterious voice is also a member of the Three Geeks podcast. Max, how are you? I'm I'm great. I'm super excited. I love Remake Revolution. Uh, personal, I'm the uh, tag team champion for Remake Revolution right now. Uh, John, did you were you aware of that? That I was. I, I I'm, am aware I'm part of. That. of oh, okay. Uh, I am. Oh, very much oh, aware. that's right. Because because we beat your team. Correct. We beat your There's team. So much for the, for the last thing that, chiming in on. Yeah, I know <laughs> that that uh, that you made. Uh, no, I just love Remake Revolution so much. I had to I had to sit in on this one. So I'm gonna shut up now. Okay. All right. Well, allow me to explain a little bit of the rules. Uh, you gentlemen, Mike and Scott, are going to pitch an idea for a property that should be remade. Because as we all know, Hollywood remakes everything. Everything. There are no more original ideas. It's all remakes and reboots. But I digress. Um, and you're going to make your pitch and also tell us all a little bit about the writer and director that would be involved in the project, the cast and the marketing. So four different categories here. And I will take some notes. And then at the end of the show, I shall select who had the best overall presentation. And you will be declared the winner of Remake Revolution. Uh, the property that we're going to deal with is one that has had several incarnations throughout its very long history. And that is the property of Superman. So, um, Mike, let's go with you first. Go ahead and give me your pitch. Okay. So I thought about this a lot because that was just kind of the idea was Superman, not necessarily a particular version of Superman that existed before in movies, but just Superman overall. And as I was thinking about that, I came up with this idea and I had a little outline for it here and a little bit of the pitch here. It's called Superman Never Ending Battle. And basically my pitch is that we age him up like he's uh middle aged now he's been like an established superhero since the 90s um he inspired a world of superheroes like the justice league the teen titans the justice society and so forth uh his arch enemy lex is comatose and been in prison for years after their last battle he's happily married to lois and actually he we can we pick up with uh, our superman in this movie right as he's on the point of deciding should he retire uh, basically because Lois is expecting and he would want to maybe focus on being a writer and father and uh, that he is now leaving the world to a whole like army of superheroes, essentially, that he inspired. Uh, so that's kind of the big emotional part of it, perhaps the big kind of uh, character development portion. But of course, nothing's easy when it comes to his life because then there comes a dual threat from outer space uh, that is easily able to like incapacitate uh, incapacitate or um, imprison all of the other heroes. And that is the dual combo of Brainiac and Mongol. And Mongol is there to conquer. He's heard about the legendary Superman across the universe. And he wants to just have a good fight and be able to take over the earth with his war world. And Brainiac is, goes along with his plan but brainiac has other plans of course brainiac in the comics is known to be more of a uh, collector of data and collector of cities and then destroys the planets so that 
what he's collected, the knowledge he's attained is more valuable. So uh, there's a dual agenda going there. And so Superman is alone, outmatched, overpowered to some extent. And so he needs to find help from the last possible place he could, which is a recently reawakened Lex Luthor. And I feel this would be like a send up to some older superhero films. It doesn't have ties to any previous continuity. It's kind of its own thing. And I feel we can really go and lean into a more comic booky, colorful, dynamic presentation with really stylized action, but not like overwhelming, like a lot of DC films can be like that last Aquaman battle. You know, how as visually like stunning as it could be, I felt like overstimulated watching sharks and giant sea monsters and crab people all at once. And so in this, since he's an older Superman, we can skip over the origin story. Or we'll come back to that later, perhaps. Um, skip over kind of his beginnings and just go right into the story about a Superman who possibly is having his last adventure and what he hopes to leave behind in terms of legacy. So that is my pitch. Okay. Uh, I have a question about your pitch, but you know what? I'm going to let Scott go first to present his pitch, but I'm going to come back to this because I have a question. But Scott? Give me your pitch, man. Okay. So um, it's actually interesting. I was a little nervous when Mike started talking about uh, uh, aging him up because I had the exact same thought. Because I was like, you know, if you're going to do a Superman movie, like we've all seen the origin story. And it's like, you know, young boy, you know, learning his powers, like has been done to death. Um, but I'm going to the extreme with that. And I'm going that this is like at least 100 years into the future. And because Superman is on Earth, um, pretty much everyone that he has, you know, known or loved is pretty much dead at this point. So it's just dealing with the fact that he doesn't really age under a yellow sun or he ages so slowly that, you know, everyone else is, you know, more or less gone. Um, with the exception, and this is the one thing. Um, you, you, so you've got like, you know, other members of the Justice League who age very slowly as well. So they'd still be around. Um, so people like uh, Wonder Woman, Martian Manhunter, those kind of people. Um, but then you also have, uh, I would say, Lex Luthor as well. Um, he would still be alive. And I kind of was thinking somewhere along the lines of like All-Star Superman, where he took that like super serum that gave him Superman's powers. Maybe there's like, I'm not saying it's directly that story, but something similar where he's always experimenting with gene splicing and kryptonite and stuff like that. Um, and he would be in some kind of maximum security prison, kind of, you know, hideously mutated in some way so that he's got, you know, some aspects of Superman, not necessarily like, you know, superpowers, but he's just been granted this unnaturally long life. And he's like the only person from Superman's like heyday who's still around, even though he's not really much of a threat anymore. So you've got, you know, this kind of older jaded Superman in a world where, things aren't really that recognizable to him anymore. I mean, no one can really hurt him. Um, and he's just kind of, you know, trying to find a reason to keep doing what he's doing in an ever-changing society. It's kind of like uh, All-Star Superman meets Old Man or Old Man Logan a little bit there. Yeah, yeah something like that. It, you know, something like there's a, you know, government that's becoming more corrupt. And because there's no one around that he really, you know, cares for anymore on like a personal level he's like what's stopping me from just like flying into the white house and you know removing people from power that i don't like you know but he's, he's still got that sense of justice that morality where he's like you know i don't want to become a tyrant i don't want to become a dictator i don't want to rule these people you know but he's got that that conflict where he's like you know i can just do whatever i want to solve a problem you know you know people can't really hurt me so what's stopping Stopping me from just going all out and you know making things the way I think they should be, kind of thing. That's pretty cool. I mean, I, I shouldn't be agreeing with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that sucks, Scott. Jeez. <laughs> no, that honestly sounds kind of neat. Honestly. Thank you. Okay. Mike, let's go back to your pitch for a minute. I do have yeah. one question. Um, sure. So I, I I got and jotted down here that unwillingly Superman teams up with Lex Luthor. Yeah, it's kind of like last resort. What's the motivation for Lex? Because I've always, in the in the mythology of Superman, is that whenever he's done something right, there's always some motivation. It's, he's getting something out of the deal. So has that, is that something that would factor into your plot? 
Um, I feel it would. Like I said, kind of the reason Superman felt, you know, sort of okay with retiring is because his primary nemesis was incapacitated for so many years. Okay. But, you know, so something happens, perhaps like you know, Brainiac triggers something or, I'm, you know, I don't have all the details, but Lex awakens. And, you know, if I were comatose for several years or, you know, unable to act for several years, I'd be pretty pissed off so I'd have a chip on my shoulder about that but Lex is also very clever he's very uh he's several he like he's like Batman a very very uh, masterful strategist and he likes to plan ahead so it could be that dynamic of when is he going to eventually turn on Superman he knows that okay. he has to okay. save the earth with him otherwise okay. there's no world left for him to you know rule over on the possibility but also does he have an opportunity to finally do away with Superman on his terms but yeah, first, so it's it's kind of your big toe. What? What? Wiggle oh. your big toe. <laughs> oh, okay. Kill Bill reference. Okay, I, yeah, I get you. <laughs> yeah, um, so, Lex Luthor is the bride, basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, in other words, it's the yeah. Okay, so Lex is well, an enemy of my enemy is my friend type of thing. Yeah, and like uh, he he benefits from saving the Earth, obviously, because he lives there. But sure. also, like he can. You know, is he going to take advantage of this opportunity to get rid of Superman in the Screw process? Him over. Yeah. yeah, sure. All right. As I jot down a few more notes here. All right, Scott, um, it's your turn to tell us about the next category, which would be writer director. So uh, hit us up. Who is directing this masterpiece? Who wrote it, et cetera, et cetera? All right. So. I went kind of a different angle um, because I don't think this is going to be like very action oriented. I want it to be very much like a focus on Superman's character because I think that is the most compelling part about Superman that sometimes gets overlooked in a lot of movies. It's just like him as a character. Usually it's like, oh, well, he can throw things into the sun. So um, I would love to have David Fincher write and direct this because I love his, you know, his just I love his camera work. I love his long takes. I love his slow burn in his movies. You know, I love his, the way he um, writes and delivers dialogue. It's always very thoughtful and very realistic, very thought provoking. Um, so that's who I have as writer director. Okay. All right. Um, Mike, who's your writer and director? Um, for me, my writer and director is Mr. George Miller uh, from Mad Max and Happy Feet fame and babe pig in the city uh but the reason why is because i feel he can uh, as a writer and director he can make for compelling scenes of drama and uh character development but when it comes to his action sequences as fury road and you know even some of his earlier work can kind of uh point out like he's very frugal uh but it, it doesn't like I said, it ties into kind of that, it doesn't have to be overwhelming or overstimulating. It can be just as visceral and just as stylized without feeling as though like your senses are being too bombarded too much. And like I said, he has an eye for like memorable visuals. And I feel, especially in previous outings where he has to streamline characters, he makes them very compelling. And on this, with the story I have in mind where you have not just, um, Superman and some of his supporting characters and villains uh, playing a central role, but maybe you have some tertiary superheroes and so forth in the mix, you know, they're not going to get as much development as they would in their own feature or like a official like team up film, but they can still make them compelling. So he is my pick. You just have to keep him on task because, you know, if you've read about Fury Road. He, yeah, I know. He, he took forever to get yeah. that movie done. Well, yeah, there's meticulous planning, obviously, involved. Yes, meticulous planning. Part of that wasn't his fault for some of those things, but, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Now to what I always look forward to and what I always have fun with, uh, casting your projects. Uh, Mike, let's go with you. We'll run down the characters and who's going to play them. Okay. So for my cast, I was thinking who could play uh, a middle-aged Superman. And at first I was apprehensive about this choice because I'm like, well, it feels like a really obvious choice. But then I'm like, you know what? He looks the part for a middle-aged Superman in my eyes now. And that is John Hamm as Superman Clark Kent. Uh, he, at least, you know, way I'm envisioning, he's in his, he's 
coming up on 50 here pretty soon. So I feel he'd have the right, right look for this particular Superman I have in mind. And, you know, he can carry himself. I feel he can do that fierceness that you might need when Superman, say, gets royally pissed off about something, but also that calm steadiness and also a little bit of smarm and charm when needed. Now, uh, muscle suit or boot camp? Oh, that dude's going to boot camp. <laughs> I don't think he needs it, but he, he's going to boot camp. I mean, the, the suit will still have, you know, some enhancements and so forth just because, you know, exaggerated physiques – to an extent are a little bit out there, but at the same time, he's going to be built for this. You're going to no. rock the bat cod piece? No, no cod pieces. No nipples? nipples, on the Superman nipples. <laughs> nope. <laughs> um, so he's my Superman. Uh, for Lois, and Lois, even though uh, what I said is she's expecting, she's not full on like barefoot pregnant at home or anything like that like she's just expecting they've just like found out and this is kind of the inciting in uh incident that provokes him into thinking do i still have to be superman um she'll still be active in the story she'll still be like uncovering stuff maybe she kind of reveals like oh brainiac's ultimate plan is this and she's the one who discovers it but lois i felt uh to match the age uh sandra bullock as Lois. And this is actually kind of a dream casting I've wanted for a while because I think she would make for a great Lois Lane. So she is my Lois. Uh, I thought about this one a lot, my Lex Luthor. I decided to go with Maharshala Ali. Uh, he it was in Green Book. Uh, he played Cottonmouth on Luke Cage. He uh, was, or he's going to be Blade for the new uh, iteration of that from Marvel Studios. I feel he is just kind of cold uh, in demeanor and calculating and looking enough to be intimidating and more than hold his own with a very kind of self-assured and confident Superman that Ham could represent. I feel that'd be a great dynamic to have this really like kind of stoic and subdued type of Lex Luthor who can still kind of make you feel uncomfortable watching him and have this very like altruistic paragon of dignity that Ham Superman could be at this point in his career. So Maharshala Ali is my Lex Luthor. My Mongol uh, would be a combination of like uh, CGI and prosthetics. I would like to combine those two and brace yourselves. And I know I've said I hate seeing this guy in a oversaturate the market, but I feel he could really pull this off. Dwayne Johnson as Mongol. Uh, because Mongol, at least the versions of Mongol I really like from comics and animation and so forth. He's this would-be conqueror. He's this guy who's always reaching for the throne and thinks he can attain it just on his pure skill alone. And I feel The Rock can pull off that swagger that's needed a little bit to make Mongol both intimidating, but also a bit of a, uh, a bit of a hindrance to himself in that regard. Cause the rock can put on that, like, Hey, I'm hot shit type of attitude pretty easily. And it'd be kind of interesting to see Dwayne Johnson play a character who doesn't always live up to that because ultimately, you know, bad guys got to lose. So, uh, he would be my Mongol and probably my most out there casting brainiac, Sigourney Weaver as Brainiac. I feel like she, same thing as with Maharsha Ali, except a different degree of cold and calculating. Like there's, when you hear like Sigourney Weaver get really kind of threatening, but still very calm and placid, that, that sends shivers up my spine, envisioning like a bald Sigourney Weaver, you know, tinted whatever shade of green you want, but has kind of this just affect or this look on her face of like, this is all by the numbers this is all calculated to the nth degree i've determined every possible outcome and i'm going to get my way on this because there is no other way that this ends like i love thinking of that representation and i feel she could pull that off um and extras here of course since you got a lot of other superheroes in the mix you could have like say cameos from batman or wonder woman not outright speaking roles but you know allusions to them since they are uh, two other members of the Holy Trinity of DC heroes. Uh, one specific thing I would want uh, that ties into the theme of legacy would be to have an appearance of the Legion of Superheroes towards the end. 
Like they just pop in from the future and you could have either Supergirl with them or a grown up Jonathan Kent, who is in some continuities, the son of Clark and Lois. So those are my casting choices. Okay. All right. Scott, who are your characters and who would you cast for them? All right. So, of course, we've got, sorry, give me one sec. All right, cool. All right, so uh, Clark Kent, Superman. Um, for this, I went with Army Hammer. Uh, I really like him. Um, I like that he still looks very young, and that's kind of the thing. I want him, I want Superman to still look very young, even though he is, like, very much older. And Army Hammer's a big dude. He doesn't need to do very much to get to this role. Like, he is a barge man, so. Um, he he was pretty much a shoo-in for me. Uh, for Lex Luthor, I went back and forth on this one, um, but I, I couldn't mess uh, with the tried and true. So I would love to have Clancy Brown play Lex Luthor in this movie. Um, and then uh, I, I would like some kind of authority figure, whether that be like some kind of military general or, or even like the president or something, just kind of a, a corrupt politician or something like that. And I would love for him to be played by Rob Lowe. Uh, kind of, you know, get some uh, Wayne's World <laughs> vibes going, just kind of a, you know, got some ulterior motives, uh, kind of conniving, underhanded guy. Um, and then uh, I would also uh, have, you know, a few members of the Justice League, you know, some of the ones who are, who either don't age or like kind of their successors. So I'd love to have Terry McGinnis, Wonder Woman, and Martian Manhunter. Um, as the big three. Terry McGinnis, I think uh, Keanu Reeves would be great in that role. Um, I like, I think they kind of just look similar, and I, I am going, you know, it's going to be in the future, so I'm assuming that Terry is going to be an, a, a much older Terry, and that he would have taken over kind of the Wayne legacy, and be doing whatever, whether that's still running around as Batman, um, or whatever else he might get up to. Uh, Wonder Woman, I would have a uh, Kate Kate Blanchett, um, because Wonder Woman also doesn't really age very much, um, but she definitely is kind of like, you know, not super young, but I think she ages considerably faster than Superman. Um, and then Martian Manhunter, I would give to Tony Todd, because I love Tony Todd, I love his voice, and I think his voice would be great for Martian Manhunter. Uh, no Lois Lane? No, Lois would be dead at this point. Okay. Um, yeah, like 100 years have gone by. She's Okay. So she's out of the picture. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. It's actually interesting cuz um I actually I thought of Sigourney Weaver for a role as well, but mm -hmm. I don't really that, uh, uh, it didn't really flesh out very much. So. Uh before we keep going here, Scott, I think um like a lot of what you're describing, I think you'd like this. It's a fan I don't know if you've seen it. It's a fan film called Tomorrow's Memoir. It's, seen it's that. sort of a similar idea of like an old Older, or not like older but like time such a lot of time has gone by and it, it's not outright talking about you know it's about superman but not about superman like they can't use him obviously but right. I, think, I think you dig it because it's a lot of like see, projecting where characters would be in the future and so forth and i think you kind yeah of yeah okay I, and, and i there is room for maybe like a lois lane but i don't really like flashbacks maybe like have like a picture of her or something like that but I don't like to rely too heavily on flashbacks to like, mm -hmm. you know, I like, I like the, the performances and the, you know, emotional weight of the scene to really carry, you know, all, everything you need in that. I don't think you need to rely on like cut back 50 years ago, that kind of thing. So. All right. Well, now we're moving into the final category for Remake Revolution, and that is the marketing. So, Scott, tell us how you would market the film. All right. So um, because I want this to be kind of a, like a character piece and not really like a crazy like set up a franchise or anything, um, don't need a whole lot. I'm not trying to start a franchise, like I said, but I would love there to be some tie in comic books that maybe highlight like key moments. So maybe like, you know, have show like when Lois died or, you know, show kind of the backstory of how Lex got to where he was or show, you know, the Justice League maybe kind of disbanding, things like that, you know, key moments in history that have led to where it is. Just so there's a little more context, I don't think it's, you know, critical, but I, I do like things like that. Maybe like just a series of one-offs um, that kind of show important moments that have led up to this. Um, and then of course, just like your kind of general 
uh, commercials and Happy Meal toys, you know, get the merchandising. Can't do anything about that, you know. Studio's gonna push that on there. So. Okay, so wait, you said commercials and what else? I I was jotting down notes. Did you say just, just toys? Like, yeah, like like you know, Happy Meal toys, stuff like that. Oh, okay. You know, all right. Things that you can't really not do, you know, <laughs> in okay. today's day and age. Yeah, it's it's pretty much a given with any. <laughs> big franchise now at this point that you're going to have that package deal. Yeah, especially for superhero stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, Mike, um, your marketing. Well, the marketing I focused on was mainly for, say, teasers and trailers because um, what I would like to see actually is kind of a callback to teasers and trailers that work more like short films, like uh, the original Spider-Man teaser that involved the bank robbery and you know webbing the helicopter between the twin towers um the godzilla 98 teaser where kids are going through a museum and godzilla's foot comes through and smashes down on a skeleton things like that taco bell. yeah kind of like yeah the taco bell dog shows up and rides his tail um but you know what i mean where it, it it's not necessarily anything that's going to actually be in the movie but it's interesting enough material that will be able to kind of get people hyped up and interested and what i was thinking was a teaser and a trailer um, I mentioned before how I want to kind of circumvent having to have the origin of Superman be retold in the movie itself. This is where you can have that origin story, so to speak, is the teaser can just be like this silent short, not silent, but short film without much dialogue involving like you see a spaceship hurling through space as uh, Krypton explodes. Maybe have some like visual allusions to Jor-El and Lara perhaps. Uh, then you just follow the ship to Earth to a cornfield in Smallville, and it's found by the Kents, who we have yet to reveal because that could be in the, the trailer, because I actually cast some people for the trailer, and that is the trailer would be a majority of like visuals of showing Clark growing up, uh, showing just a child actor or a teen actor kind of in the role, developing their strength, developing super speed or heat vision and things like that, learning how to finally fly. And as they're doing that, like intercut it with like Ma and Pa Kent kind of providing his moral compass, teaching him kind of things that are going to make him the Superman we all know, we all recognize, you know, like use your powers for good to help others guide the way, that type of thing. And like Ma could be Evangeline Lilly, and Pa could be Oscar Isaac, just because I think that would be a cool combination to see together. And they would only be for that. Like, they wouldn't be in the actual film. It would just be kind of this cool gimmick of using them for this short little experimental film and trailer. And then the final shot is revealing Ham as Superman. So, and then I would leave it at that because I hate trailers that explain the plot in depth, you know, throughout their whole running time, so. Yeah. All right, let's recap here, if you will. Uh, Mike, your pitch is Superman never ending battle. He is older, Lex is in prison and comatose. Uh, Superman is married to Lois and expecting their first child. And Superman's got the idea that he might retire until Mongol and Brainiac show up and he's forced to team with Lex Luthor. Uh, Scott, your pitch. An older Superman set 100 years in the future. Everyone that he knows, or a large majority of people that he knows, have passed on. Um, he has to battle some sort of corrupt authority figure and uh, find a reason for going on and continuing on. Maybe not so much action, more philosophical character driven. Uh, let's look at the cast. Oh, excuse me, the writer and director. Excuse me. Mike, you said writer and director would be George Miller. Uh, Scott, you said writer and director David Fincher. And Mike's cast would consist of John Hamm as Superman, Sandra Bullock as Lois, Mahasha Ali uh, as Lex Luthor. I butchered that, didn't I? I can never say his uh, name. Oh, that was, yeah, that was Mahershala. Terrible. Mahershala. Mahershala, Mahershala, Mahershala Ali. Mahershala Ali. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Come on. Thank you. Come on, John. Get I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Brainiac, Sigourney Weaver, and Mongrel would be, or Mongol would be Dwayne The Rock Johnson, uh, where Scott gives his cast as Superman as Army Hammer, Lex Luthor, Clancy Brown, Martian Manhunter would be Tony Todd, Wonder Woman, Kate Blanchett, 
the evil authority would be Rob Lowe and Terry McGinnis would be Keanu. And final marketing. Mike is going to focus on a short film type of trailer or teaser incorporating even named actors that you know and love that would have nothing to do with the project, just be in the trailer by itself. Possibly maybe giving the origin story of Superman where uh, Scott says it since it's more of a character piece, he would tie in the backstory and the setup for the movie in comics and then do your usual commercials, internet advertising, happy meal toys, yada, yada. Did I miss anything, gentlemen? Scott yeah, says thumbs everything. up. It's all good. Yeah. Well, Max, I, I'm, I'm curious. I'm just really curious here since Max has had to kind of sit and listen quietly. Yeah. Max, Max, you can discuss while I will make a decision. And I, okay, I, yeah. I, actually, um, I'm taking earbuds out so you can say whatever. Good, good. Uninfluenced. <laughs> um, guys, I got to say, listen to both of your pitches. Um, the surprise, like, the, like, I'm like, the holy shit, I never would have thought of that. Um, from Mike was uh, Mahershala Ali for uh, for Lex Luthor. Mm -hmm. uh, that is that is just an awesome awesome casting choice. I love it one hundred percent. Scott, for you, uh, Keanu Reeves, Terry McGinnis is probably the most badass thing I can think of. I want that movie uh, now, honestly. I just want the <laughs> Terry McGinnis movie. Yes, there's got to be one scene where Terry McGinnis goes John Wick on everybody, and I I'm one hundred percent down for this. Uh, that was that's just a great pick, way out of left field. I thought um, that that works. Uh, I like it a lot. Could he have Ace with him, since you know John Wick and dogs and stuff? But could he have Ace the Bat Hound with him yeah, too? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Or, or is that, Ace is the that second too on the nose. Ace the second. No, it's not too on the nose. Ace Ace is awesome. <laughs> Whatever. I, I think if they hadn't had a dog, and it was Keanu Reeves, and like, oh, of course he has a dog. It would have been like weird. But since Ace is like, oh very yeah. much like a part of Bruce Wayne's like older life. Like, I don't think it's out of the question. I don't think it's like, oh, there's just a dog because of John Wick. No, it's a dog <laughs> with history. And you're right, right, Max. It would probably be Ace the second because that dog would even be old. Ace Ace number one would be old. By yeah, it. you know, like Ace is only going to live for like, I mean, he's a great Dane. They only live like 10 to 12 years on average. Like, that's not. Uh... <laughs> no, that, that casting choice, my, I was like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Give me that movie. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, because I'm not a Superman fan. So. I, you know, like, I was like, okay, which one of these is going to make me want to see the Superman movie? I, I don't know that I, like, this is how much I hate Superman. I don't even know that I'd still go see either of your movies. <laughs> <laughs> Just doesn't speak to you. That's fair enough. <laughs> it's all good. All right. But no, this, this is great. This is a lot of good stuff. Okay, I'm ready to render my decision. Um, it took me, uh, I, it really took me a long time generally speaking with the pitch um both of these are great i mean I, I i i dig the idea scott of a more philosophical superman tale not as much about the tights and the fighting and the kapow and all that jazz um i would like to see that i don't know if the, the rest of the masses would want to see that but i would really like to see that uh mike i like your idea too of the older superman pondering retirement one more go round man with with the enemies and having a team with lex i like that too i you know i don't know i'm, I'm a huge fan of mall rats so i'm not sure about the the pregnancy angle you know because <laughs> i i was i was actually counting down waiting for uh, the mall rats reference as soon as i dropped that i was like well you know what side note if either one of you would have cast lobo in your su Superman, you would have won hands down because I'm like, I love Lobo. I've been like, that's it, you win. I don't care. The main um, man. Well, damn, I thought about that, but I was like, eh, I don't think he's <laughs> right for this type of movie. <laughs> no, Wait, he wouldn't be. He wouldn't this, be for. It's just in Lobo casting. <laughs> uh, so the pitch, I'm going to. I pick Mike for the pitch. I, I I like that. Not not that again, Scott. I think yours was really clever, and I liked it. I yeah. I I I, I would have liked to see that. I so Mike definitely has more uh, general appeal, just in terms of like. Sure. It's a yeah. it's a more like. I don't know. I, 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 I don't want to I don't want to say make it sound like it's typical or run of the mill. No 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 no. Is, it is just a more like, like expected plot of like a superhero film. That that was very much the mindset. I'm like I want to do the story, but I also know that general audiences and so forth the way that they're at i want to live in a world and it probably will be when we're old men when we can appreciate a 
you know, an older, more, like you said, philosoph uh, philosophical reflection mm -hmm. on, on Superman. Absolutely. I would love to see that movie, honestly. So. Mm -hmm. uh, so we come to writer and director and again, a tough, tough decision. Uh, but I felt like if we are looking at a, a really over the top type of action flick that also needs a little bit of that, that underlying drama, I think George Miller's the man to pull it off. So Mike, I went with writer and director for you. Um, so now we're gonna move on to cast. I really like Scott's casting. I, I think Army Hammer would make a really good Superman and Clancy Brown as Lex Luthor. Oof, sign me up. He, I, I, I dug that, I dug that. Um, so I, I'm, cast goes to Scott. So now that leads us to marketing. Uh, I gotta say, I, I, I hate to say it, Scott, but I think your marketing's kind of weak on this one. I went with, with Mike because I like the idea of those old school type of trailers that it was like a, an extension of the movie. I like that idea. I think that idea is great. I think tying in, you know, actors you know and recognize, uh, as you mentioned, who'd you, you mentioned, let's see, uh, Oscar Isaac and- um, um, Evangeline Lilly, I think. And is, yes, wow. yeah. and, and those two, you know, people would go, oh, shit, that's that, oh yeah, they, they, we gotta go see them. I mean, I like Oscar Isaac, he was great in Star Wars, yada, yada. And that might be the old bait and switch, but I think that that would work so well in today's society. So marketing goes to Mike. So that's three for Mike, one for Scott. Mike is your winner of Remake Revolution. We're going to throw Army Hammer in there. Absolutely. Because <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it more and more now. He, um, fun fact, he was actually supposed to be uh, Batman in George Miller's Justice League. Really? Yeah, that was the whole thing. George Miller was supposed to do a Justice League movie, but the writer's strike in 2008 happened and like pre-production just halted. But Ground to a halt. Jeremy Hammer was supposed to be Batman, as it were. But I could see him as a Superman, absolutely. That'd be like, cool. Yeah, I, I, I could see him as it too. And I have a very limited, I don't, I'm trying to think, the only thing I'm familiar with his work, the only thing I've ever seen Army Hammer in was Nocturnal Animals, mm -hmm. he was which he was really good in. Uh, he was a Lone Ranger. He was, which I thought he was fine enough. You know, I wasn't a Lone yeah. Ranger. There's a lot there of the problems aside from him. Um, but he was also in Man from Uncle too, where he was opposite Su Superman Henry Cavill. So yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Like, I forgot about. Well, this. I never saw those two. He was also the um, the twins in the Social Network. Yes, so, that's the Winkle right. Twins. Winkle Boss Twins. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he could play so, dual role. Really. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Literally. two things I've seen Army Army Hammer in. So, um, all right. Any any last words or anything as we wrap this bad boy up? Congratulations, uh, Mike. Well, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Stuff, this, man. Is, this, is, this is one of the uh, fairer plays of remake Evolution that we got. We're not <laughs> going at each other's throats like a certain person who just left the chat usually. Does. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I would I would love to see like a more you know a more serious minded like meditative look on on superman especially like a superman that's always been a story that interests me and that's why i wanted to kind of go to that territory but not fully so i'm, I'm glad you kind of did go into that territory of like the superman who's so far removed from the glory days mm -hmm. dad. it's like yeah absolutely well yeah, i'm yeah. kind of like max i just i i agree like i don't think his character a lot of times is like anything to care about like, yeah he's just kind of a blank slate who just does good all the time and when, so, they yeah, do, when they do try to do stuff with them, that's complex. It ends up being really not engaged. Like, yeah, the Man of Steel stuff I never really got to engage with. Yeah. Yeah. So well, it, and and, and I think they take it to care. the nth degree. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, Superman, let's turn him evil. Oh, no, that's not a character driven, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's just switching him and it's lazy. Yeah. And like, yeah, all the twists and turns of that, it, I agree. It's It's very much on the surface like it's not anything deep it's all it's just surface changes we'll just make him bad or we'll put uh, he never married lois or some mm -hmm. bullshit like that mm -hmm. yeah so yeah so all right with that um well played, well played sir you as well that's good stuff <laughs>
So, Mike, uh, would you like to tell everybody where they could find you on the internet and talk about your YouTube show, which obviously this is, you're, this is you're be watching fun. part of it. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, youtube.com slash Mike McGee TV or on Twitter at Mike McGee TV or um, for podcast stuff, anchor.fm slash Katie Michael. And uh, you can find all that there. So, yeah. Scott, how about yourself? Where can find folks find you on the internet? Uh, so you can find me at the Three Geeks podcast. So I'm on there. I try to be on the main cast as much as I can. Um, I'm mostly found with uh, Max and Dan on the Animaniacs. So uh, we're going to try and uh, get something else going tomorrow, get a new episode going. You know, it's been tough with the quarantine. So, uh, yeah, just come over to Three Geeks, uh, Three Geeks podcast. Uh, you can find us on all those streaming services, so Spotify, you know, Apple Music, iTunes, whatever they call it these days. You know, they're switching. You know, <laughs> yeah. Anywhere where podcasts can be found. Do you guys have the TikTok? <laughs> I do not believe so, unless Jason said something. <laughs> <laughs> and Three Geeks Ninja is the yes. uh, Three, Three Geeks, Geeks Ninja, Ninja. Ninja. Um, is the website. Yeah, and Recycle Your Droids. Yeah. Uh, oh, where can we find you, John? Since you're Yes. Uh, well, you can find me. Uh, I'm on Twitter. My personal handle is at PVDMVP. Um, but the PVD cast, which is my podcast, can be found at PVDcast.com or throughout all the various different major platforms as well, such as Spotify and Apple Podcasts and Deezer and iHeartRadio. And also every Monday night at 9.30 p.m., you can check out the PVD cast on Redline Radio. It's an internet radio station out of Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Redline Radio LLC.com is the website, or search for them on Facebook, Redline Radio LLC. Or if you happen to be an Android user, you can download the app. All you got to do is go over to Google Play, search for Redline Radio LLC, download it, and you can take the station with you. Uh, I have been told that the Apple version is coming soon. So if you're like me and you're an iPhone user, you, you're kind of screwed. But nonetheless, uh, I want to thank those guys for helping me out. and allow me to be on the station. So that's where you can find the PVD guest. Nice. And thanks, Max, for sitting in and giving us some feedback. Absolutely. Yeah, always good to have him. I'm glad he gets a kick out of just <laughs> enjoying it and not having to be a participant, like just in sitting and listening. <laughs> yeah. All right. All, All right. right. Well, right. with that, thanks, folks, for listening and checking out uh, Remake Revolution. And we'll talk to you later.